Today is the start of a new mini-series on this channel. We're over four parts I'm going to be reviewing the 2012 Formula 1 season. Looking at all the moments that made it such a great season. Before we get into 2012 though, let's look at what happened one year ago in 2011. In that season, Sebastian Vettel would dominantly take his second world title. Winning the championship in one of the best F1 cars we have seen in the 21st century. As he won the title as early as the Japanese Grand Prix. That left McLaren and Ferrari to be thoroughly beaten by Red Bull. Those two teams had enough to win some races, but not enough to win the championship. And then coming after those two would be Mercedes and Renault. These two manufacturers could not even get a race win. As Renault went on to change their name to Lotus for 2012. And then in the midfield as ever we had a tight battle with Force India coming out on top. Having a very good and consistent season. Going into 2012 though there would be some new regulations. Such as the banning of blown diffusers. Something that was pioneered by Red Bull and was definitely a big factor in Red Bull being so dominant in 2011. The blown diffuser was banned because of the amount of downforce that it brought to the car. Also being banned was reactive ride heights, which was helping some teams with the stability of the car. And also for 2012, the front wings were lowered by 7.5cm, and, and this on the 2012 cars was extremely noticeable. There was also some changes to some of the driver lineups heading into 2012, for Lotus, it would be an all new driver lineup. Firstly, with the returning Kimi Raikkonen, returning after his two season hiatus from Formula One. And his teammate would be GP2 champion Roman Grosjean, very keen to prove a point after his failed F1 experience back in 2009. Nico Hülkenberg was also back in the sport after a season out, as he would drive for Force India, replacing Adrian Sutil. Bruno Senna replaced Rubens Barrichello at Williams. And there would be two new drivers at Toro Rosso, with both Daniel Ricciardo and Jean Eric Verne replacing Sebastian Buemi and Jaime Alguasuari. But by now, it was time to start the season in Melbourne. And as soon as we got to the first race, there was already controversy, as both Red Bull and Lotus thought that Mercedes' rear wing was illegal, claiming that they had some kind of double DRS system. But the FIA going into the weekend were totally fine with this. So for now at least, Mercedes were in the clear. In qualifying, both HRTs failed to qualify for the race. This was the second year in a row they did this, and they were not given permission to race. But in qualifying, there were plenty of shocks. First off, Kimi Raikkonen only qualifying in 18th, after a massive miscommunication on his final run in Q1. This first race, they would show how bad the Ferrari car really was. Their pre-season testing was one of the worst in their history. And in Melbourne, both cars were knocked out in Q2. But this session would turn out to be good news for the Aussie fans. As Daniel Ricciardo amazingly made it into the top 10. And Mark Webber would out-qualify his world champion teammate Sebastian Vettel. But it would only be for 5th place. As the shock of qualifying came from Roman Grosjean. Qualifying his Lotus in P3. And that would leave the two McLarens to lock out the front row with Lewis Hamilton taking pole position. McLaren were looking very good. But it would not go so well for Hamilton at the start of the race. As his teammate Jensen Button beat him down to turn one and took the lead. But it was still a McLaren 1-2. There would be though a collision at the first corner. Involving people like Mark Webber, Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hülkenberg. With Hülkenberg having to retire from the race. For Vettel though, he was immediately battling back from his lowly 6th place starting position. As in the first 5 laps he passed Nico Rosberg for 4th place. Things would not go well though for Roman Grosjean. As after a very poor start he was put out of the race by Pastor Maldonado. As Maldonado hit Grosjean whilst trying to pass him. It was also not good for Michael Schumacher. As whilst running in 3rd place his gearbox failed. Preventing what could have been a possible podium. The race though for Ferrari at least was going a lot better than qualifying, as Fernando Alonso was now nicely getting into the points. On his return, Kimi Raikkonen was also making some very nice progress, getting his way through the field and getting into the points. But then halfway through the race, a safety car came out for a broken down caterham. That would not be good for Lewis Hamilton, 
as because Lewis Hamilton pitted right before the safety car came out, Sebastian Vettel was able to stay out on track and gain more time. And when Vettel pitted under the safety car, he came out ahead of Hamilton. With Vettel now second and Lewis Hamilton now in third. The race may have been going well for Fernando Alonso, but not Felipe Massa. After he retired from the race after a collision with Bruno Senna. What a miserable weekend for Felipe. But when the race ended, it was Jensen Button taking the first win of 2012. Jensen Button would win from Sebastian Vettel second, Lewis Hamilton third, Mark Webber fourth and Fernando Alonso in fifth. Then it would be Kobayashi, Raikkonen, Perez, Ricardo, and Paul De Resta rounding out the points. As Ricardo and De Resta just about got some points. In a very, very close battle at the end of the race. Despite showing promise, Mercedes and Williams did not have good races. With both teams failing to score points. With Jean-Eric Verne just about missing out on a point. There was yet more controversy though surrounding Mercedes coming away from the Australian Grand Prix. As both Red Bull and Lotus again did not think that Mercedes car was very legal. But once we came to the second race of the season in Malaysia again nothing was found wrong. As we came to Malaysia though there was rumours that Felipe Massa was going to be replaced by Sergio Perez for 2013. This is all after just one bad race. But at the time this was swiftly denied. And going into the weekend, Kimi Raikkonen sadly would have to take a 5 place grid penalty, as the team changed his gearbox. Qualifying in Malaysia though would not be as surprising as it was in Melbourne, as in Q1 the usual suspects went out. In Q2 though, Felipe Massa once again was eliminated, as he was still really struggling with this new Ferrari car. On the face of it, Sebastian Vettel's qualifying was not that good, but he did end up qualifying in P6 on the harder compound tyre. His mentor though, Michael Schumacher, would have a great qualifying, putting the Mercedes car up in third place. But again, like in Australia, it would be a McLaren 1-2, with Hamilton first and Jensen Button in second. The race though was chaotic to say the least, as at the start of the race the track was wet, but a few laps into the race it turned into a lake, as cars all over the place were struggling to just stay on the track as Rosberg's Mercedes teammate Michael Schumacher was hit by Roman Grosjean at the start, which I'm sure you can imagine caused a lot of chaos, and the rain got so bad that the race was red flagged, to wait for this massive downpour to pass over, and once it did, the racing returned, and after the restart, McLaren's race would fall apart, as Lewis Hamilton did not have enough pace to go on and win the race, and Jensen Button had to pit for a new front wing after making a lot of contact with a HRT. Flying along though would be the Salva of Sergio Perez, a driver that was rumoured to be going to Ferrari for 2013. And in the race he was showing exactly why, as he was seriously competing for the race win with a works Ferrari of Fernando Alonso. The world champion though was not having a good time at all, as when lapping the rain car to Kane, the HRT made contact with Vettel's rear tyre, causing Vettel to now have a flat tyre costing him what probably would have been a top 5 finish. But at the front there was still some important racing going on. It was Alonso versus Perez for the win. But after Sergio Perez made quite a big mistake at the end of that race, Fernando Alonso would take Ferrari's first win of 2012. A win that absolutely no one saw coming. Sergio Perez though would finish in a very impressive second place, proving just what a star he was with Lewis Hamilton 3rd, Mark Webber 4th and Kimi Raikkonen in P5. With Bruno Senna, Paul De Resta, Jean-Eric Verne, Nico Hülkenberg and Michael Schumacher completing the points. But there was a lot of heavy hitters outside of the top 10. With Sebastian Vettel, Nico Rosberg, Jensen Button and Felipe Massa all not scoring points. As Maldonado, Kobayashi and Roman Grosjean all retired from the race. Vettel though was still seething over what Narain Carter Kane did to him as after the race he went on to call Carter Kane an idiot, but there was nothing he could do now, as after the first two races Fernando Alonso now led the Drivers' Championship, with Lewis Hamilton second, Jensen Button third and Mark Webber in P4. At the moment the world champion Sebastian Vettel was nowhere to be seen. In the constructor standings though McLaren were leading, with Red Bull in second, Ferrari in third and very surprisingly Sauber in fourth. 2012 already had the promise of a great season. The Chinese Grand Prix weekend though for Lewis Hamilton would start off horribly. 
as he had to take a 5 place grid penalty for changing his gearbox. And soon enough his Shanghai came qualifying. Where again in Q1 who you would expect to go out went out. But then we had a rather surprising Q2. Where Felipe Massa again in the Ferrari was eliminated. But the big shock was Sebastian Vettel going out as well. As he qualified in only P11. The early part of Sebastian's season was getting worse. Also not having a good qualifying was Jensen Button, who in qualifying could not even make the top 5. The biggest surprise was the Sauber of Kamui Kobayashi, who massively impressed after qualifying in P4, but would start the race in 3rd because of Lewis Hamilton's penalty, as Lewis Hamilton would qualify in 2nd but go on to start the race in P7, meaning that for the race it would be a Mercedes 1-2 with Nico Rosberg on pole position and Michael Schumacher in second. This was their first pole position and one two in qualifying since the 1950s, all the way back when Mercedes were last a works team, and at the start of the race they would maintain that one too, with Rosberg ahead of Michael Schumacher. But for Michael, his race would not last very long, as after his first pit stop he had to retire from the Grand Prix, as one of the wheels was not fitted properly. The race was also not going well for Sauber and Kobayashi, as not only him but also Sergio Perez were falling back through the field, as on race day they just did not have the pace to get a good points finish. For a long time Kimi Raikkonen looked as though he was going to get a podium, his first podium back in F1, but eventually he was passed by multiple cars as he was struggling with tyre wear, all because Lotus went very ambitious on their tyres, and tried to do less stops than anyone else. But it did not work as Kimi had to pit for fresh tyres. Compared to Malaysia things were not going well for Ferrari or Fernando. As they were struggling a lot in normal dry conditions. And Alonso would end up finishing in P9. Like the Lotus of Kimi Raikkonen Sebastian Vettel was also falling back through the field. As he was trying desperately to hold on to second place. But was then passed for second place by the much faster McLaren of Jensen Button and then the other McLaren of Lewis Hamilton for third, with Vettel also being passed by his teammate at the end of the race. But by the end of the race, Nico Rosberg went on to take his first win in F1, with it also being Mercedes' first win as a works team since the 1950s. Jensen Button was second, Lewis Hamilton was third, Mark Webber was fourth with Sebastian Vettel in P5, with Roman Grosjean, Bruno Senna, Pastor Maldonado, Fernando Alonso and Kamui Kobayashi rounding out the points. Because of Kimi's unscheduled pit stop, he finished down in 14th, with Felipe Massa still struggling in a miserable 13th. Then we came to Bahrain. This would go on to be a very controversial Grand Prix, as the race was held during the ongoing violence in the country. But nonetheless, the Grand Prix took place anyway. And going into the Grand Prix, there would be yet another penalty, this time for Maldonado. There were a lot of penalties in 2012 as you will see by the end of this series. In the first part of qualifying though, there would be quite a big shock, with Michael Schumacher going out in Q1. How things change after just one race. In Q2, Felipe Massa continued to disappoint, getting eliminated again, but also eliminated was Kimi Raikkonen, as he just about missed out on the top 10. The biggest surprise of qualifying though was Daniel Ricciardo, who somehow put his Toro Rosso in 6th. What an amazing performance. Qualifying in Bahrain they would see the return of Red Bull's great pace. First off with Mark Webber qualifying in 3rd. And Sebastian Vettel taking pole position. His first pole of 2012. A pole position that Red Bull were expecting to get a lot sooner. And the race would also turn out to be a great day for Red Bull. But Red Bull did not have the fastest car in the race. That would go to Lotus, who with both drivers were flying through the field, because of the much better tyre wear that the Lotus had, giving them a great advantage in Bahrain. One team that was struggling though was McLaren, as in the first stint of the race the two McLarens were falling back, and then Hamilton had a disastrous first pit stop, putting him down into the lower reaches of the points. Maldonado's lacklustre weekend ended in a very exciting way having quite a big tyre failure after turn 3, and this would force him into retirement. The start of the race went very well for Ferrari, with both cars making great starts, but because of their poor pace they were now both going down the field. Ferrari still had massive issues. 
The race winner from Shanghai was also not doing that great, but would still go on to get a healthy points finish. Then came an intense fight at the front between Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen, as Raikkonen tried to pass Vettel into turn one, but Kimi failed to get the move done, as he admitted later he was not aggressive enough. McLaren's poor race was capped off by the retirement of Jensen Button. McLaren also had issues to sort out. No longer like in the first two races did they now have the fastest car. The shock result of the race would come from the force injury of Paul de Resta, as he somehow managed to hold off Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton for P6. A great drive by the Scotsman, but it would be the world champion Sebastian Vettel taking his first win of 2012. Vettel was now back on form. It was also a great day for Lotus with Kimi Raikkonen second and Roman Grosjean in third, with Mark Webber fourth and Nico Rosberg in fifth. Then De Resta was P6, Alonso P7, Lewis Hamilton P8, Felipe Massa 9th and Michael Schumacher in 10th. A very impressive drive from Michael from the back of the grid. It was also again like Shanghai a disappointing race from Sauber, finishing only 11th and 13th. And it also wasn't good for Williams as both cars retired. And after those two races both championships massively changed around. As in the driver's standings, it was now Vettel leading from Lewis Hamilton second, Mark Webber third and Jensen Button in fourth. And Red Bull were also top of the constructors as well. With McLaren second, Lotus now third and Ferrari down in fourth. Could Red Bull and Vettel now maintain this going into the European season? Find out in part two. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back tomorrow with another episode of the podcast. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, there's a link below down in the description, also with a link to my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below what did you think of the first four races in 2012. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.